Asian jackfruit enchiladas, bacon and add mango salsa. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas, bacon and add mango salsa. Hello my loves and welcome back into my kitchen. Today we are having a live musical cooking class here at 1 p.m. CST. Hopefully y'all are tuned on in. And y'all, we're gonna be making something that is so delicious. We're gonna be making three separate pieces of this delicious Haitian jackfruit enchilada. So y'all may know this, but my name is Gabrielle Reyes. Y'all also know me as One Great Vegan. One Great Vegan. Be like one great vegan. One great vegan. So hopefully y'all are watching this cooking class and you feel like one great vegan when you step away after cooking all these delicious meals, my loves. So before we get going and before we get glowing, we got to wash our hands, my love. So let's get going. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Before you wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Wash your hands before we get to cook. I want y'all to set your oven to 450, 475 degrees. Some people's ovens are different, so I'm gonna start mine 450, see how my cheese melts on my enchilada, and then we'll go from there, my loves. All right, so the first thing we're going to do to get our Haitian jackfruit enchiladas going is get yourself some oil or some vegan butter. Grapeseed oil works, I love grapeseed oil. Today I'm gonna be using some sunflower oil. Like I said, you can also use vegan butter, vegan butter, vegan butter. I love using vegan butter in my recipes. And the other thing you're gonna to wanna to do once your oil is nice and hot, we're gonna start getting our onions cooked down. Y'all know how it is. Cooking is easy and fun when you sing. Onions and oil can make anything. Cooking is easy and fun when you sing. Onions and oil can make anything. And today we're gonna to prove that to be true yet again by starting off all of our enchilada fillings that chicken, that vegan chicken we're gonna be creating out of some jackfruit, some whole jackfruit that I chopped on up. And then we're gonna be adding in some potatoes and then of course that sauce, that marinade. So let's start, get our oil nice and hot and let's start by adding in our onions to your pan. Cooking is easy and fun when you sing. Cook down your oil and onions to make anything. You can make anything. You can make anything. Seriously, anything you want to eat vegan, you can because you can use the same seasonings that you would in a traditional recipe like I'm doing today, but create different kinds of textures, that meaty texture, you can use jackfruit, you can use mushroom, you can use cauliflower. Today I'm gonna to be bulking up my chi vegan chicken, Haitian chicken, vegan Haitian chicken. <laughs> Today I'm gonna to be bulking it up with some white potatoes as well and some bell peppers, y'all. It's just gonna be so fabulous and flavorful. So a little bit about this recipe, so y'all may know this, I'm half Haitian. My mom immigrated from Haiti when she was 12 years old. She moved to, La, uh, not Los Angeles, she moved to New York City. New York City, Queens, I believe it was. And then she went through the school system there. She actually said it was, she had a really rough time, which I can imagine she didn't speak any English. She's coming to this country, you know, had no money. She was so broke, so poor. She came from a third world country. Um, nonetheless, 
she figured it out and ended up going to college, ended up studying biomedical engineering, and then she met my father in college, and my father is part Puerto Rican, half Puerto Rican, half Swiss, so they met and boom, here I am today. So I grew up eating this recipe, a version of this recipe. I remember distinctively, whenever you're making this recipe, uh, typically you use chicken, and pool, pool en sauce is typically the name of this recipe. Um, and for me, I remember distinctively, everyone would always leave the bones in the chicken. And I understood like, okay, that's like what you do with this recipe. But for this, I wasn't gonna recreate no bones because obviously I don't need bones anymore. So we're gonna be using the jackfruit to be like the chicken. But like I said, you can use mushrooms if you want to, if you want that fatty kind of chicken. Or you can use a mixture, oh my gosh. You can use a mixture of the jackfruit and the oyster mushrooms or the jackfruit and the dry mushrooms oh that'd be so delicious but today we're going to be using some jackfruit because that's what's easy that's what's breezy that's what's beautiful and that's what's going into our pot so i remember i mean every single time i would visit my family in new york they would make this recipe i mean it, it with rice with rice and beans um and it's interesting now that i meet Ace and he's Jamaican and we basically all have the same recipes. We just use different spices So in a traditional like Jamaican culture recipe you use scotch bonnet, you use green pepper, you use thyme uh, You use allspice, but for the Haitian recipe instead we're going to be using some oregano We're also going to be using some turmeric in there, too. So the same kind of spices blend in between Caribbean cultures I found but it just depends on where, what island you want to go to and what kind of spice you want to add into your recipe. So let's get these onions nice and cooked down. My burner, she be running kind of slow today, y'all, but that's okay. She's still going to go and glow. All right. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. Bake them and add mango salsa. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. Bake them. And I'm going to show y'all how I like to open up my mango. It's just the easiest way for me. A bunch of people have different techniques. In fact, you know what? We'll try two different techniques when we're opening up this mango. But I want to show y'all the way you know a mango is ready to go and glow is if it's nice and soft. So you can see I can push into it. It has a nice tenderness to it. I like to get mangoes that have a mixture of a little bit of green, but mostly red and orange on it. That's just because I know those ones are real, real sweet, my loves. All right, so we're going to be cutting this up for that mango salsa, and they're going to be adding in some bell peppers and some red onions. But you know what? While we're getting the onions cooked on down, let's chop into our mango. Let's see how she's doing today, y'all. Oh, 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 oh. Where is my knife? Where is my knife? I ain't got no knife, knife. I ain't got no knife, knife. No, I got a knife. Now I got a knife, okay, y'all? We had to have a whole spiritual moment for our knife because y'all know how it is. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm gonna basically kind of guesstimate where my seed is. I like to chop in on the sides. So let's chop on in, y'all. Oh, come on, onions, cook on down. All right, I'm gonna chop up my mango. Let me chop off this side right here. Oh, yeah, she's so good. All right, I'll show y'all, look at this. So I guesstimated where my seed was. I guesstimated right. I'm just gonna take this piece off right here. And then I can kind of see, feel if there's still some wiggle room near the seed. So let me chop on the other side. Hopefully this knife is not my best knife, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. I am not going to lie. Ooh, yes. This so one has a little piece in it that I'm gonna cut out, that piece right there. But look at this beautiful mango. Oh, mango is one of my favorite fruits in the whole freaking world. It's so delicious and fresh. And you can just, uh, you can sweeten so many different things with it. I love it so much. All right, so I'm just gonna be chopping up my mango. Let's see, I'm gonna get, see however much more I can get off of this. I'm gonna dig into a little piece of this right now, y'all. Stay tuned. All right, so I'm just gonna peel off the skin of these smaller pieces, just like that. 
Peel off your skin of the mango. Peel off the skin of the mango. Peel off the skin of the mango. Y'all check it out. Hi, y'all. Hello. <laughs> Mangoes make me smile because they have a natural smile in them, y'all. All right. Let's peel off some more mango. Peel off the skin of the 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 mango. So y'all, I've started doing this thing before class where I actually start um, like warming up. I'll start listening to like the latest music and I'll just start riffing and letting my voice be free. Do what she do. I'm going to cut out this little piece right here because I don't want that rotten piece. I mean, I'm sure she's fine. And if I ate her, I'd survive. But um, I don't want to eat that right now. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to chop this just like this. Ooh, we're dripping everywhere, but that's okay. Ooh, drippy, drippy mango. So this is one technique. You can do it this way, kind of the same way you would chop a, um, an avocado, y'all. This is the same way I would chop my avocado. And we could spoon this out. And the other technique I want to show y'all, where is my glass, y'all? Check it out, check it out. The other technique is if you grab yourself a glass and press it up and give it a pass. Grab yourself a glass, press your mango, give it a pass. Grab yourself a glass. Press your mango, give it a pass. So basically I am just rubbing the skin onto the side of my glass. And I've always found that this works with like a bigger rimmed glass just so you can get everything. And boom, off comes the skin as well. So boom, there's two ways to chop a mango. There's so many different ways to chop fruits and vegetables, my loves. There is no one way that's better than the other. Some are probably more efficient, but you know, we ain't worried about that right now. All right, look, these onions are cooked down. That was perfect freaking timing. I love it. All right, let me put my mango to the side. That way I will chop that up later while this thing is baking down. All right, so we have our onions and oil. So that means the next thing I want to do is add in some of my jackfruit, my loves. Get this nice and cooked down. And while this is cooking down, we're going to create that marinade. This is a pool or sauce. Marinade, which basically means chicken in sauce. And the sauce we're gonna be making today, y'all, is so fierce, so fabulous. So to help this get cooked down even quicker, I'm just grabbing myself a nice sharp, well, it's not too sharp, it's made out of wood, so it's not crazy sharp, but a nice pointed spatula, and I'm just breaking everything up. I've already chopped up all of my pieces of jackfruit, so, you know, you don't gotta do too much, but you wanna make sure that the pieces have enough they're broken apart enough so that that sauce can really soak in there. So, all right, give this a nice good chop, just like that. And then I'm also gonna be adding in a little bit of my salt and pepper just to help this go and glow. You can add in, honestly, as much or as little salt and pepper. For the whole recipe for the Haitian jackfruit chicken, we're gonna be using about one half to one tablespoon of salt. It all depends on however much broth you have or if your broth already has salt in it. Mm, she's already smelling good. She's just onions and jackfruit though. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. All right, let's let this cook on down. And while she's doing that, we're gonna be making our marinade, my loves. And you know what, to get this cooking even faster, y'all know I'm gonna put her on my big girl butter in the back. Whoa, oh, whoa, ooh, oh. Big girl butter in the back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Big girl butter in the back. I'm gonna put her on my big girl butter in the back because I know she's gonna get nice and hot quicker. But until she gets nice and hot, I'm a big girl butter in the back. I'm gonna let her cook up right up here. All right, so let's add together our ingredients for our marinade. The first thing you're gonna wanna get yourself is some lime juice. I'm adding in about one and a half to two tablespoons of my lime juice, just like that. And I also have some fresh lime too if I need some extra lime juice as well. Add in some minced garlic, about one tablespoon of your minced garlic. Add that into your medium-sized bowl. And y'all, let's talk about 
habanero peppers, my loves. So what I've done here is I've actually chopped up my habanero pepper. You can do this in a food processor. Honestly, that's what I suggest. That way your hands don't have to get all messy and, you know, sticky and spicy. This is a habanero pepper or a scotch bonnet pepper. People, oh, hey, y'all, she's ready to bake. Hey, she's ready to bake. Hey, our oven is ready to bake. Whoa. <laughs> All right, y'all. Y'all saw that. I told you at the very beginning, make sure your oven is set to 450 degrees. That way we'll be able to bake up our enchiladas. So this is a habanero pepper. The other thing, if you don't want to chop this up or if you can't find this, get yourself some habanero hot sauce. That'll do. It doesn't have that same punch that you know you really want with that habanero pepper, but it'll still be delicious. So I'm going to be using about half of this for my mango salsa and then half of it for my jackfruit. Y'all, let's go on in. All right, Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. That's if you want to add in your own words after the first verse, okay? All right, so it looks like this is cooking on up. I'm going to put her on my big girl burner in the back so she gets nice and hot. And she is nice and hot too. I see you cooking down, girl. All right, all right. All right, next, my loves, let us add in some fresh parsley. This is one of those key ingredients whenever you're making Haitian food. Add in about one fourth cup of fresh parsley. The rest, we're gonna leave for later. We'll just put that on the top. Next, get yourself a little bit of acidity. Apple cider vinegar, white vinegar. It doesn't really matter what kind of vinegar you use. Apple cider vinegar is just the best one I found that's best for your spirit and your soul and helps your body. Add in about one half tablespoon. Like I said, this is just for some acidity. We're gonna balance out everything. Let's add also in some oregano, my loves. I love using oregano in my recipes. Not only is it really good for you, my parents used to actually feed me oregano underneath my tongue uh, whenever I was sick. So it's healthy, wealthy, wise. That's what I'm saying, y'all. That's why we cooking up in here. Add in about one and a half tablespoons of your oregano, and then, y'all, let's talk about time. Whoa, oh, oh, let's talk about time. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. let's talk about time. Whoa, oh, oh, let's talk about time. Whoa, y'all. Oh, oh. So I have some dry time here. I have some fresh time. I'm going to be adding in a few of my fresh thyme leaf sticks. Now this is key. <laughs> I've always found whenever I was growing up, typically in a traditional home cooked uh, poule en sauce, you just leave in the whole stick. You don't take it out. So what I want to do is I'm going to be adding in a few of these since we're going to be making this into a enchilada filling. I don't want to put a stick in the filling, you know what I'm saying? So at the very end, before we fill up our tortillas, I'm gonna take these out, but I'm also gonna be adding in some dry thyme as well. All right, let's add in some thyme. Whoa, oh, oh, let's add in some thyme. Whoa, oh, oh. All right, let's add in about one half tablespoon of some thyme, adding in that fresh thyme as well. Y'all know, garlic powder, onion powder. Garlic powder, onion powder. I'm adding in about one and a half tablespoons of each of these. Y'all know I love garlic powder and onion powder. So typically in this recipe, you use um, like a pre-made seasoning. A lot of people use like a pre-made Haitian seasoning or like a Latin seasoning. Uh, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to build it from scratch today. Sometimes I use pre-made, but a lot of the time I really like to use things from scratch. All right, y'all. So the other things we're going to want to add in there is some tomato paste. Add in about two tablespoons of your tomato paste. Squeeze it on in there. It's going to add a nice red color. This also, this recipe has so many beautiful colors in it too. That's what's awesome about it. Oh, turmeric. I was talking about color, my loves. Turmeric's going to add in a beautiful orange color to soak into those onions, to that mushroom, to that jackfruit. So add in about one to two teaspoons of your turmeric. You don't need to add in too much because turmeric is powerful, okay? So let's see. I think I added in almost everything. The next thing y'all know what it is. We've got to add in 
exactly know how to pronounce it just yet but y'all stay tuned that's gonna be a learn and experience for me yeah so this has some oil it has yeast it has some garlic and it has the maize spice so all right y'all let's go in let's do what we gotta do add in about one and a half cups of your oh yes actually let's add in more because i already know we're gonna be making a lot of this today and i want a big serving all right, so we have almost everything. Sounds like our jackfruit is cooking up fiercely. Let's add in our salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, salt and pepper. I add in salt and pepper to every recipe. Y'all already know how it is. Sometimes I don't add in as much pepper as salt, but they always go in because you need salt, okay? Unless you're using like liquid aminos or something that already has a pre-made salt in it, you wanna make sure that you don't get too salty. But if you do happen to over salt something, add in some coconut milk or any kind of plant-based milk. I suggest like a thick one like oat or coconut and it'll help thin out that saltiness. And you can add in other seasonings to kind of mill, dull out the over saltiness. So that's just a little tip y'all. All right, so we have our marinade right here. Oh, I'm so excited. It already smells delicious. So let's whisk this up. Give this a nice mixture. Oh, smell that oregano. Smell that scotch bonnet. Smell that turmeric, that parsley in there. My love, this is already, I already know it's gonna be delicious, okay? I already know I'm gonna be making more of this while this is cooking right here, okay? All right, so my loves, we have our marinade ready, so it's time to add in our bell peppers as well as our marinade. So what I've done here is I have chopped up some red bell peppers. Mm, this is about a full pepper, honestly. So add in your bell peppers, and then we're also gonna be adding in some potatoes. Now I suggest chopping up your potatoes pretty small because you're gonna want these to cook pretty quickly. We don't wanna be sitting like, waiting for potatoes to cook. That's like waiting for paint to dry, honestly. Um, so I would chop them up into pretty small pieces. That way it'll be pretty simple to just let these cook on in really easily, my loves. All right, so add in about one cup of your potatoes. Like I said, this is a nice, this is gonna be something that thickens things up, adds in more bulk to those enchiladas. And when you bite into this enchilada, you wanna feel that hardiness, you know what I'm saying? All right, look at this already. This color is fabulous. Mix together everything, your onions and that oil that's been sauteing down, as well as your peppers and your potatoes, y'all. Oh, I am so excited to eat this because I haven't eaten something this beautiful in a very long time. I feel like on Saturdays, that's my day to like go in with my treats, y'all know. My stack real pizza dia, my veggie, uh, pizza dia that I made that was such a freaking treat. Hopefully y'all got to see that recipe as well And it's gonna be a treat as well. Okay, so I have mixed everything together pretty well And the next thing I'm gonna want to do is first of all, I'm gonna grab the top that goes on this I just washed it this morning So I'm gonna grab it out of that because you're gonna want to make sure that everything gets to soak on in and you top off your pan with the lid so let's grab our lid nice and clear. Come on in. All right, we'll be using that in just a little bit after we pour in our sauce. So like I said, I've mixed together all that beautiful seasoning and spice. Mix, put it on into your pan. And it's gonna cool down because obviously you added something cold to something hot. Fear not, it is all good. 
Mix this all around, make sure everything's getting nice and soaked up. And I'm gonna tell y'all already, I'm gonna add in more of my veggie broth because I wanna make sure that these potatoes cook on down. So typically something that people do whenever they're making this recipe with chicken is they actually marinate the chicken in this sauce for like hours and hours, but I don't feel like doing that today. If you want to, your food will taste incredible if you marinate it overnight, if you marinate it in this mixture we just made. Y'all, oh, she already smells so freaking good. But like I said, if you marinate it in that mixture, it's gonna taste even better than it would right now as we're making it live. Right here, right now, USA 2020. I don't even know what day it is, August 29th. 2020 has been a wild year. So I don't even know what day it is. I don't know where we are. All right, so there we go. Like I said, make sure everything is nice and below your line. You wanna push down all of your potatoes nice and low to the bottom. And I'm gonna show y'all what we got here. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. Y'all check it out. Look at all this color, vibrancy. We have our jackfruit, we have our potatoes. We have our peppers in here, my loves. I'm gonna put this on my big girl burner in the back so she gets nice and hot quicker. But before I do that, y'all, I'm gonna add in some more seasoning because y'all know I'll be going in with the seasoning and spices, okay? I see that I added in a little bit more of my veggie broth. So that means I'm just gonna add in more of my seasoning to make sure that that veggie broth doesn't overpower my seasoning and spices because at the end of the day, you really want all of these seasonings to soak into all of your vegetables, my loves. So let's add in just a little bit more of everything, a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, oregano. All right, add that all in. Let me add in a little bit more of my garlic powder and my onion powder. And you don't have to do this, honestly, if you don't want to, you don't have to add in more seasoning. Um, but I, I really like seasoning, y'all. I'd be going in with my seasoning if you can't tell. So, mix this all together. I want to make sure that everything is going to get all that oregano, all that spice, all that scotch bonnet up in there. You know what? In fact, let's add in a little bit of our habanero hot sauce just to make sure that we got that seasoning, that spice in there, y'all. Y'all already see how beautiful and delicious this is going to be in your mouth. So, let's put this in our big girl burn in the back and we're going to work on our easy enchilada sauce. All right, big girl butter in the back. Make sure to cover it. All right, so this is getting cooked on down. We're gonna be cooking this for about, you know, 15 to 20 minutes or however long it takes to let the potatoes cook, TBH. All right, let's work on our easy enchilada sauce, my loves. So what I have here, the first thing we're gonna do, actually, get yourself some oil and all you have to do for this recipe, oil, seasoning, sauce, mix it up, and that's all you got to do. Add in about four to five tablespoons of some oil. Y'all know I love oil. If you don't want to use oil, you don't have to. You can use aquafaba, you can use veggie broth, you can use this bouillon cube that I use today. Uh, fear not, you can use whatever you want to. But after your oil is getting nice and hot, my pan is already nice and hot, add in some chili powder. I'm adding in about one and a half to two tablespoons of our chili powder. This is the main flavor for our enchilada sauce, my loves. So don't, don't be ashamed to go on in. Go in with your chili powder, with your goodness, with your deliciousness. Where'd I put my whisk? Ah, here she is. And you're just gonna start to whisk this up as it gets hot in your oil. So you don't want this to burn, obviously, but you want this chili oil, in a sense, chili powder oil, to get nice and hot. Oh, y'all, you should smell this. You should smell this. You could smell this. Y'all, you should smell this. You could smell this in your kitchen. And hopefully you're cooking at home along with me and you are smelling these fierce smells. Oh my goodness. Wow, wow. Oh, and also y'all, I want, everyone's always asking me, where do I get my pans and pots and things? So this pan right here, this is from our place is the always pan. Ooh, she's getting nice and hot and toasted. And then these spoons I'm 
been using are from Island Bamboo. I love them, they're beautiful, and everything kind of matches, it's starting to match, and that brings me a lot of joy, my loves. All right, so your oil is nice and hot. That chili oil is perfect. Next, add in some gluten-free flour. Add in about one and a half tablespoons. I would add in, obviously, more chili powder than gluten-free flour. And if you need to, you can add in some more oil just to make sure that things stay pretty liquidy. You don't want them to get too thick. All right, so let's add in a little bit more of our oil while this is getting nice and heated up. And basically, you're creating a chili roux in a sense. Ooh, hello, girl, she fell down. To create a chili roux out of your flour and of your chili powder. So let's add in a little bit more, kind of mix as you go, get the desired thickness that you like. We're gonna be adding in some more tomato sauce as well. And then if we need to, we'll add in some veggie broth. It just all depends on what kind of thickness you like your enchilada sauce. I like mine, you know, medium thickness. Uh, definitely like a, I would say almost like a ranchy kind of consistency, like a little bit thick. You know what I'm saying? A little thick. Uh -huh. All right, so there we go. We have our chili sauce nice and hot with our gluten-free flour. Next, let's add in some cumin. Just a splash of cumin. You don't need too much. I would say about one-fourth of a tablespoon will be just fine. And mix her on in there. Oh, yeah, smell her. These enchiladas are going to be so fierce, y'all, because we are making everything from scratch. But as you can see, it's not complicated. This isn't anything fancy. We're just mixing, blending, and creating beautiful food while singing a song and doing a dance. So it's a good time. We're going to have fun creating this and putting this all together, my loves. All right, next, I want you to add in your tomato sauce. Add in about one to two tablespoons, depending on however, or tablespoons, add in one to two cups, depending on however many enchiladas you're making. I'm gonna be making about eight enchiladas with my tortillas that I have today. And as you can see, I am just whisking everything together, getting it nice and thick with that tomato sauce. So next, now you can see it's starting to get a little thick. I don't obviously want this the same thickness as tomato sauce. So what I'm going to do is grab myself some more veggie broth. And as I stir this around, we're going to pour this veggie broth on in and get the desired thickness that you like. All right. This is what's great about cooking, especially on a stove top. You can kind of like play as you go. You can add things. You can take away things. It's all about just balancing out whatever feels right, whatever feels authentic to your spirit and your soul. Maybe your grandma makes enchilada sauce a different thickness or a different way. That's okay, you can still make it that way. I ain't gonna be mad at you. It's still gonna taste delicious and fierce and fabulous. And look at this, we have our enchilada sauce is coming together. I'm just adding in a little bit of my veggie broth. This is that same vegan chicken veggie broth, which I'm so excited about it because it's gluten free, it's soy free, it's nut free, it's vegan. Just like this recipe, another allergen friendly recipe. Y'all know I love to create recipes that everyone can eat. So there we go. I believe our enchilada sauce is Gucci to go on the thickness. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna add in a little bit of my salt and pepper. And if you want to, you can add in some smoked paprika as well. Ooh, what y'all think? Y'all think I should add in some smoked paprika? I'm gonna add in smoked paprika because y'all know I'm obsessed with smoked paprika. I am adding in about one half tablespoon of my salt and then one fourth tablespoon of my pepper. You actually don't need much pepper at all. Maybe even like one teaspoon of pepper. Like I said, it's all just to balance out everything. So there we go. In goes your pepper. 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 Oh, oh, oh. Mm, let's give ourselves a taste. Let's see what she needs. Does she need anything? Oh. Oh, she is good. Oh. Yes. Yes, girl. All right. She is delicious. She is so good. Uh, she is delicious. Mm -hmm. Oh, she is so fierce and fabulous and fresh. Then I'm gonna add in a little bit more of my salt, just because y'all know I'm a salty girl. You know, like I said, that's what's beautiful about cooking on a stove top. You can kind of pick and choose if you want to add in more salt, less salt. 
And like I said, this has a nice, good chili kick to it, but just needs a little bit more salt to bring out all those flavors, love, loves. All right, give this a good mix. And she is hot, ready to go, my loves. All right, so we're gonna be using this throughout our recipe. First, we're gonna line the bottom of our glass tray with it, and we're gonna pour it on over. You can use this also again and again. You can make, obviously, a different kind of enchilada if you want to. You can use this as a dip. You can turn this into a soup. You can do so many things, mainly because it's already seasoned well and it's made out of tomatoes. So you can make like a fierce pepper jack avocado grilled cheese and then make this as like the dipping sauce. Y'all need to do that. I'm gonna just say that right now. Somebody needs to make that because that sounds so good. I'm gonna add in a little bit more of my veggie broth just because it looks like she's getting a little thick on me, a little too thick. All right, girl, there you go. And the thing is, it's the same kind of theory. Whenever you're adding in more broth, a lot of the time some of that seasoning may dissipate. So let's actually add in just a little bit more of our chili powder and then let's add in that smoked paprika. In goes that chili powder. Y'all know I love a heavy seasoning on everything. And then in goes our smoked paprika. Smoked paprika, hey, smoked paprika, hey, hey, hey. Whoa. So this recipe always comes out best whenever you cook that chili powder down first. I found just because it has that nice little edginess of that, almost like a grilled. It's like a grilled flavor. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. A nice grilled flavor on your, or like a little burn bit on your chili powder. So I really like it. I think it's delicious. Also, you can make green enchilada sauces if you want to. You don't even have to use this enchilada sauce. Sometimes with this recipe, I just eat the Haitian jackfruit and just eat that with some rice and beans, my love. So you can kind of do whatever you want with all three of these delicious ingredients. All right, there she goes. Let's see how she doing. Mm. Yeah, there she is. There you go, girl. She is perfect. All right. So, we have our jackfruit cooking, we have our enchilada sauce, nice and ready to go. I'm gonna move my burn, let's see, is she hot? I need to get myself a towel. Mm-hmm, she's hot and bothered. Y'all, that enchilada sauce is already so freaking fabulous to eat. So excited. All right, so the next thing, my loves, we're gonna be moving on into making that salsa I was talking about. So grab yourself a bowl. Uh, this is a little bit smaller than I wanna use, but honestly, it don't matter today. It's gonna be all good. We still gonna make it all fierce, fabulous, fresh, and delicious. Like I said, get yourself your mango. I got my, I gotta take a bite, y'all. It just looks so delicious as Craig calling my name. Mm, 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 mm. Yes. Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm Mm hmm mm hmm Yeah, mango's the truth, y'all. Mango is the truth. We ain't playing games. All right, so this mango salsa, y'all, you can use it, honestly, in the same way you use the Caribbean spice salsa. You can put it on taquito, in taquitos, you can put it on tostadas, put it on top of a taco, fill up a mushroom with it, fill up, and you can do anything, honestly. It's just good, it's savory, it's fabulous, it's fresh but it has a different hint of flavor to it than the Caribbean Spice Salsa. All right, so let's take that mango that we cut out all those pieces. Like I said, hopefully y'all saw I cut my mangoes two different ways. This one, I used the avocado, avocado slicing technique. Ooh, she getting nice and hot, y'all. She getting cooked, that's how you know. She's like, I'm almost ready, mama, I'm coming out. All right, I have spooned out my avocado pieces. See, I like this technique, but this seems to be of the problem a lot of times. Some of the pieces tend to stick together and the pieces sometimes come out a little too big. So I'm just gonna chop up these pieces into nice bite-sized portions. So, so far, I like my cup technique better because I already know I can manage those slices of mango even better. Oh, but mango's so good. It's like slippery, sweet, you can freeze it, you can turn it into ice cream. You can put it into savory meals, obviously sweet meals, but I just love using it in a multitude of different ways. I love using it 
like I said, in desserts, in meaty things, in uh, holiday recipes, just all year long. Same thing with pomegranate and pineapple, y'all. Just adding in a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of tropical fruit into some recipes, y'all. Oh, it can change the whole situation. All right, so I'm cutting down my pieces into a nice bite size. I mean, these are tiny pieces of mango I want here because I want these just to delicately, delicately balance on my enchiladas. This isn't like the main star, but it's gonna add that nice pop of freshness along with the other elements we have in there. All right, mango salsa, mango, mango, mango salsa, mango, mango, mango salsa, mango, mango, mango salsa. She got her own rendition of it because she's that delicious. Ooh, y'all, let's check in on our jackfruit. Let's see how she cooking up. Yes, girl. All right, so our enchilada sauce, she looks like she is ready to go. So I'm gonna turn off my heat for my enchilada sauce. And this right here, ooh, yeah, she's cooking. I, sometimes I like to give my pot a shake. That way I can get everything moving without having to open up the lid. All right, so I've cut up my mango. I'm gonna chop up my other mango pieces because y'all know I'm gonna be making a lot of my mango salsa. I love it. All right, chop up your mango just like that. And if you don't have this mango salsa, that's okay. You can use, honestly, whatever salsa you want. I just, mangoes are prevalent in Haiti and I freaking love mangoes, obviously. So I figured, why not just add everything I love into one recipe? All right, chopping this up. See, this is why I like the cup technique better, because I have more control of the pieces that come out of my mango. So I'm gonna vote for my cup technique, y'all. You, you saw it here, live, in the One Great Vegan Kitchen. Y'all saw how it went down. I'm gonna vote for my pieces, because if I have the mango taken out with the cup, I have the ability to just chop it up on my cutting board, like I'm doing now, with the other mango pieces, that I did avocado chopping style. It was kind of hard because some of the pieces come out a little bigger, just like this one. And I don't want all my pieces bigger. I want smaller pieces. But also, the thing is about colorful home cooking, y'all, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be anything that it isn't. It just has to be delicious and feed your body, heal your soul, do everything good that you need for your life. Okay, so don't worry about the chops. Eat your food. Mm. Eat the rainbow. Oh. She's still good. Mm, 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 mm. All right, so I have my mango in here. Lots of mango. I have my green bell peppers. Add those in. I'm trying to add in about everything equal. I would say about one half of a cup of everything. In go your chopped red onions right there. Uh, my husband, he doesn't typically like like diced red onions that are raw. So sometimes in different recipes, I like to take them out. But this one, since we don't have any red onions in the other parts of this, but I want to keep these ones nice and fresh. And the other thing we have, my loves, is some green onion. And what I'm gonna do for this technique, I'm just gonna use some scissors and chop off about one fourth of a cup of some green onion into my salsa. And then we're gonna be adding in that scotch bonnet pepper in there, some lime juice, as well as a little bit of smoked paprika, and then some salt and pepper. Pretty easy to make. This is obviously the easiest part of this recipe, my loves. But it's all delicious, y'all. It's all good for your spirit, for your soul, for your body, you know what I'm saying? Okay, in goes our green onion. And where's my scotch bonnet? Ah, here she goes. Add in about one tablespoon of your scotch bonnet pepper. You can add in more too if you're feeling brave. Add in some smoked paprika. It's gonna give it a nice color, a nice smokiness to it as well. And then salt and pepper to taste. Salt and pepper to taste. However you like salt and pepper to taste. However you like. All right, and then I'm gonna add in a splash of some grapeseed oil as well as some lime juice, just to give it a little bit of liquid to get things moving and the seasoning sticking on everything. So here we go. And I think I'm actually gonna transfer it into a bigger bowl, that way I can mix everything together for sure. All right, and the salt is actually gonna bring out even more flavor, especially the pink Himalayan salt. It's gonna bring out even more flavor in that mango, my loves. So I think that's everything.
everything, let me add in a splash of our lime juice and then just a pinch of some oil. You really don't want to overdo it. I would say no more than half of a tablespoon. And then let's add it into this bowl right here and mix it up. Yes, girl. Oh, yeah. oh y'all, this smells so fresh. So fresh and so clean, clean, y'all. Mango salsa. Oh, she is beautiful. I'm gonna add in more of my red onions just because I really want everything to be well balanced whenever you take this mango salsa and put it on top. I want you to be able to see every single element of it. So there we go, my loves. Let's add in some more smoked paprika because uh, smoked paprika is life, my loves. All right, where's she at? Smoked paprika, hey, smoked paprika, hey, hey, hey. And she's gonna add in a nice, just a beautiful little bit of more orange in that color, but also that freshness. So there we go, let's mix this all around. Get that mango salsa. Oh, y'all, I may just eat this by itself. Mango, mango, mango salsa. Mango, mango, mango salsa. Y'all check it out, she is beautiful, she is fresh. You can eat her with taquitos, tostadas, chips, whatever you like. All right, so she is done. We're gonna put her over to the side and then y'all let's clean up a little bit and we'll get going with everything else. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas, bacon and then mango salsa. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas, bacon and then mango salsa, salsa, Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. I think I'm gonna clean out this bowl actually and use this one for the salsa because it just looks so freaking beautiful. And I always want my salsa to shine in a clear bowl. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. All right, so after we do this, y'all, we're gonna check in on our jackfruit, see how our potatoes are cooking. And then we should be able to start to build up our enchiladas. Okay, so let me grab my salsa, transfer it over to my pretty glass bowl I got here. This is gonna be so pretty, I love it. Oh, and I also wanna show y'all the jackfruit that I bought that I used for this recipe. So go on in there, salsa. Mango, mango, mango salsa. Oh, she is stunning, she is gorgeous. Yeah, she has that little bit of green, a little bit of freshness. And we're gonna add in even more freshness, my loves, because we're gonna be adding in that, um, the parsley on top, as well as, actually, you know what, screw it, I'm just gonna add in this as well. Um, we're gonna be adding in some vegan feta on top. Y'all, it's just gonna be decadent as all get out. Y'all get ready, get your taste buds going, get everything ready to feast, my loves. Haitian dog food enchilada. All right, my love, so let's check in and see how these are doing. She's getting nice and thick, so that's a good sign. Grab yourself a fork, move her on over here. Come on over here, girl. 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 Oh, ho, ho. oh why all oh, the potatoes are already cooked, my love. This is perfection. I'm gonna bring this over so y'all can get a better look of what I got going up in here. Oh, she is heavy. <laughs> she got some girth to her, I see. All right, oh. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. Y'all check it out. Look at this beautiful color we have here. The potatoes are cooked. The jackfruit is soaked on into that sauce. Those peppers are sexy. Now all we have to do is just take out that thyme and they're gonna wrap up our tortillas. All right, let's get things going, my loves. This is turning out so beautiful. Haitian jackfruit enchilada, bacon and a mango salsa. So I'm just gonna be picking out my stems 
of my thyme. That way those don't go into the enchiladas, but some of those pieces have obviously fallen off and all that flavor is still in there. Y'all, I love the color of this. I love the potatoes. And if your potatoes aren't fully cooked yet, that's okay because we're gonna be cooking it in the oven anyways. So you just wanna make sure that your fork can go through them. All right, so there go our thyme pieces. And y'all, let's build up our enchiladas. Okay, oh, they also the jackfruit I'm using today, this is Trader Joe's jackfruit. Comes in a can, it's about $1.50, $1.50 whenever you buy it. So y'all look into it, I love using it. I use it all the time, I use this brand. I mean, anytime I buy jackfruit, honestly, it's Trader Joe's brand, so. All right, so I like to get myself, whenever I'm making anything that involves tortillas, rolling, anything like that, I like to set myself up, get my things ready to go. That way I'm not scrambling, trying to figure it all out. So what I have here, I have my, ooh, I have my gluten-free tortillas right here. I'm using two brands today. I'm using a uh, Trader Joe's brand with, I'll be real with y'all, that's not my favorite gluten-free tortilla brand. But I'm also using one that is, um, made out of like rice and I got it at Sprouts. So y'all look at that. One of them was about $4 and the other one, the Trader Joe's one was about $3. So there you go. And then the other thing we're going to want to get is some vegan cheese. And then my loves, get yourself a little bowl of some paste. And what this paste is made out of is just some gluten-free flour and some water. It's going to help keep those enchiladas closed as we're stuffing them. All right. So the vegan cheese I'm using today, this is follow your heart. Follow your heart, vegan goodies. Follow your heart, vegan goodies. I love Follow Your Heart. I tell everyone to get Follow Your Heart because I feel like it's the brand that tastes the most like cheese, you know? People are always like, oh, I miss cheese, I miss cheese. I'm like, I got you. And that's another thing with this recipe when you're considering saltiness. Consider the saltiness of your cheese, see how that is, and then, you know, assess the situation. All right. Let us grab our enchilada sauce. Ooh, she is nice and thick. She is juicy. Ooh, she's hot. And oh man, she's, I just love cooking enchilada sauce for like a little bit longer than you really should because she gets just nice and thick and delicious. All right, one of my phones is dying, y'all. So I don't know if you know this, but whenever I film my Saturday cooking classes, I actually use three iPhones. I use one iPhone for Facebook, I use one for Instagram, and then I use one for TikTok. And my TikTok phone was dying, y'all, so. But I have this whole contraption set up. Y'all should see the behind the scenes. Check out my Instagram for behind the scenes videos of what it all looks like whenever I'm setting this up. So I have my enchilada sauce here. I'm gonna pour in a little bit just on the bottom of my pan. That way this is just gonna get things easier to stick down. You wanna make sure that none of your enchiladas pop open while they're cooking. So I would say add in about one half cup to one cup of your enchilada sauce. Honestly, it just depends on whatever container you have. This is the glass case I will be using. And as you can see, I'm just letting it flow from corner to corner, making sure every edge is covered in that enchilada sauce. And then y'all, it's time to layer them on in here. All right, perfect. Okay, Haitian jackfruit enchiladas, bacon and bad mango salsa. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab a good helping of my Haitian jackfruit, adding in about one third of a cup. Put it on one edge of your tortilla and then sprinkle in your cheese. I would say about two to three tablespoons of your cheese. And then you're just gonna start rolling that into itself, into a nice, this is the same way you make those bean and cheese taquitos, y'all. Y'all know how it is, y'all know how it is. I'm just rolling it all into each other. And then grab your paste that I was talking about, that flour and that water paste. And you wanna make sure that it's about like two tablespoons of the flour and then one tablespoon of the water. And just roll it into that paste. And that'll help keep things nice and stuck as well. So then we're gonna add it into our pan. Ooh, there she goes. I'm gonna be laying it down this way, as you can see. And there goes in our first Haitian jackfruit enchilada. All right, let's fill these rests up. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. 
They smell so good with mango salsa. It already smells so fabulous. So, oh, I think I filled this one up way too much. I got too into the song, y'all. Sometimes that goes down. Sometimes you get too excited about the singing and you, you overfill your enchilada. But that's okay. That just means more love in your enchilada. All right. Sprinkling in my cheese. There she goes. Yes. And she can, you know, she can bust open. That's okay. Ain't nobody going to judge her for who she is because she's going in your mouth. And she's going to be delicious from your spirit and your soul. And these, if your potatoes are already cooked down, these don't need to bake too long. Honestly, it's just about getting that cheese nice and melted. So I am putting the seam end down, that end that we're using, that same putty, that same paste, flour paste. I'm putting that seam down. That way I know for sure nothing's going to get loose in this time. All right, let's fill up another one. I think I'm going to be doing about five or six of these, which is perfect because that's the to how many tortillas I've got. I got six tortillas, y'all. So that's how many I think we're going to be doing today. I want to make sure to get some of that red pepper in there and then let's sprinkle in that cheese. Also, y'all, what's really good with this recipe is pepper jack cheese, any kind of cheese. I'm keeping it basic today with the mozzarella, but you can add in cheddar, gouda, any kind of cheese that you like. Um, like I said, follow your heart is my personal favorite. Miyoko's is fierce too. What are the other brands? I'm like thinking, what are the other brands of cheese? Oh, Vio Life is delicious. They're all good. It's just about finding whichever one makes sense for your palate. So there we go. There we go, another juicy enchilada. Oh my gosh, she is sinfully delicious. And what's fierce is we're gonna have more of this vegan Haitian chicken left over. So that way I can use this with rice. If I want something a little bit lighter than the full enchilada, I can still enjoy this recipe. I can put some quinoa with it, or whatever I like, honestly. It doesn't matter, it's gonna be delicious. And it's gonna last a pretty good time in the refrigerator as well. All right. Let us fold Haitian jackfruit enchiladas, bake them and add mango salsa. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas, bake them and add mango salsa. Salsa, 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 oons, 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 salsa. Can y'all imagine the remix? Cause uh, I do. I imagine remixes of all my songs, y'all. Like the techno club dance beat and everybody comes dressed up out as mangoes. That's how it be, y'all. That's how it be. All right, we're gonna do one more of these. Fill her on up. I'm gonna get lots of peppers and potatoes in this one. I want this one to be nice, juicy. Well, this one has a hole in it, but that's okay. Like I said, this is a messy meal, y'all. I'm just trying to make this as pretty as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Pretty as possible 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 doesn't have to be perfect. That's kind of like a speech on humans okay we're trying to be as pretty as possible none of us trying to be perfect okay we're all trying to do our best pretty as possible not really perfect all right in goes our last enchilada and y'all check it out look at this Haitian jackfruit enchiladas so beautiful so while i'm up here it looks like my instagram is telling me i'm about to run out of time in about one minute and 32 31 seconds so i'm gonna log out of that real quick y'all but i'm gonna come back in two seconds so i'll see y'all soon Haitian jackfruit enchiladas bake them and add mango salsa let's add into instagram all right Hello, my loves. Hello, hello again. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. Pick them and add mango salsa. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. Pick them and add mango salsa. Salsa. Pick them and add mango salsa. Yes. All right, y'all. Let's add in our enchilada sauce on top. That way we can bake them and then add in our mango salsa. All right, so I'm gonna be using my pour technique 
that same thing. I'm just gonna pour this on over a generous helping of my enchilada sauce. Ooh, come on over, girl. Yes! Pour on over. Oh, oh, wow. And if you want to, you can just do it. I like to leave the corners still pretty bare so I can still, like, you know, see what it was before. All right, and then let's mix this on over, oh, spread this on over, just like that. Nice thick enchilada sauce. There we go. Come on in, girl. Yes! Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. So I'm just spreading over my sauce. I want to make sure everything gets a nice even coating before it gets that cheese covering. All right, so there we go. Look at our beautiful, oh, they smell so freaking fabulous because they have so many different flavors in there. And then I have my generous helping of cheese. I'm gonna just sprinkle this on over. I like to sprinkle pretty much down the middle just because that's where we're gonna be kind of building the whole thing right here. All right, there we go. And also my love, I'm gonna build myself a little tiny one that way, I'll be able to eat it later. <gasps> Look at this. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. Let's add them into our oven, y'all. I'm going to bake them for about 10 to 15 minutes. All right. There we go. <gasps> go on in there. Like I said, we really want that cheese to do all that melting in there. And then we should be ready to eat, my loves. All right, so let me build myself a tiny one. That way we can take photos of the big one right there, but I can still enjoy the feast as well. All right, so let me add in some of this jackfruit potato, a uh, bell pepper mixture. Y'all know you're craving this. Y'all are like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I could do that with jackfruit. And I'm over here telling you, yes, you can. You can do anything with jackfruit. You can do chicken, pork, Man, you can fry it, you can bake it, you can just, any way you make it. It's beautiful, delicious. All right, in goes my cheese into my little tasty bit that I got right here. Make sure all those potatoes, I like to just make sure I am squeezing everything as tight as possible. I don't want it to escape my enchilada when it's cooking. Add in that paste on the side. You're like basically using this as glue to get this nice and tight. And then let's add this. Oh, I think she might be too big, y'all. We're just gonna make, we're gonna chop this in the middle and we're gonna make two tiny ones. All right, there we go. Perfect, oh, look at my mini, look at that, y'all. Tell me that wouldn't be like the most delicious little lunch, okay? With a little salad on the side, y'all gonna be like, oh, I didn't know I could eat things that cute and delicious at the same time. And I'm here to tell you, yes, you can. Yes, you can, yes, you can. All right, let's pour on over our sauce. I didn't add my sauce onto the bottom, but that's okay for this little mini one. We understand how she's going to go. She's all about the flavor. The mini one is all about that flavor. Mm, mm, speaking of flavor, mm, mm, mm. All right, let me pour on over my vegan cheese. Look at her. Yo, look at this tiny, cute little enchilada. Look at her. She is just a little enchilada situation right there. We're going to bake her up. That way I'll be able to eat this and we'll be able to feast, take photos all at the same time, my loves. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas, bacon and add mango salsa. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas, bacon and add mango salsa. So we are currently baking our enchiladas and let me actually move this over to the side because we're done cooking things, y'all. We do not have to cook anything. All we have to do is wait for our beautiful enchiladas to bake. Look at all this beautiful stuff. I'm going to take a bite of this right now, okay? Y'all saw me looking at this, and now y'all best believe I'm going to dig on in. All right. Let me get myself a little bit of everything of this. Ooh, let me get that potato, that pepper, and, of course, that jackfruit, too. Mm. <gasps> Y'all, look at this beautiful Haitian jackfruit. Ooh, y'all, y'all, look at this. All right. I'm done. I'm done. Why is it so good? Why is it so good? Why? Why is it so good? Y'all. Oh. My gosh, you know what makes it perfect? I'm gonna tell you right now. It's a scotch bonnet pepper, the oregano, 
and the apple cider vinegar. I know, it's like, what, with the apple cider vinegar? Yes, it is making it acidic. Oh my, oh, I cannot wait to eat this with the cheese and with the enchilada sauce. Y'all, oh, dig on in, dinner is served, lunch is served, it's time to go, y'all. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Wow, 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 y'all. And that lime juice though, and the lime juice gonna be fierce, and everything's gonna taste like it was marinated. Oh my gosh, it tastes everything. Literally, it, the seasoning is soaked in there, and I'm gonna tell y'all why. Because number one is jackfruit, because jackfruit will soak up that seasoning for your life, and also is because we chopped everything into small pieces. I would say it also has to do with the amount of liquid we use. We really use an abundance of liquid to be able to soak into everything. And also, of course, y'all, we went in with our seasoning and our spices. Seasoning is everything. Seasoning is everything. Well, seasoning is everything. When you make it vegan food, when you make it plants to eat food, when you are making plants to eat food, that don't really make sense, but it kind of does because if you are growing the plants, then you would use those plants to make the food you eat, but we're not growing that today, y'all. We're just making plants and seasoning and spices, and y'all, your girl may eat all of this by the time we're done. Oh my God, look at this potato. Look at that turmeric. Look at that oregano. Ah, oh, look, like so freaking good and so easy to make. All right, so, Let's see. Ooh, it looks like my other phone is dying too, y'all. This is fun. When all your phones start dying because your recipe is way too complex. <laughs> Actually, the way I look at this recipe, it's not complex. It's just three separate things that we're making. If you want to, oh, something that could be so fun for like a date night or for like, you know, everyone cooking at home. If you want to, somebody could work on the Haitian jackfruit. Another person works on the enchilada sauce. And you have the kids work on that mango salsa. There's not too much, obviously there's no flames they have to get near. But also if one parent is like chopped up all the mango and everything, y'all can make this a family experience. That way we're all eating, we're all getting fed, we're all getting our nutrients inside of our body. But also it's a fun experience that everyone could do together. So that's kind of, I guess, why I created this recipe at the end of the day was, I didn't really cook with my parents growing up, but I remember smelling it and I remember eating it and I remember you know, forming my own thoughts about what I was ingesting in my body. You know, I think we always kind of grew up fairly healthy. You know, we understood that plants are powerful and they heal you, but we still ingested a lot of meat, fish, dairy, oh! And y'all, I'm gonna be real with y'all. Every time somebody talks to me about dairy, I, I get nervous for them. And they're talking to me about like their health issues. I get worried because I'm like, you know this doesn't have to be a problem, right? Mm, excuse me. I always tell people, you know, if they're suffering with skin issues, with bowel issues, with eczema, you know, erectile dysfunction. If you're suffering, I, I guarantee something will change if you remove dairy from your diet. That's just honestly the truth <laughs> because the way I look at dairy is, you know, obviously as children, as a woman, we have the ability, and some men, I learned this too, as a woman though, a mother, you have the ability to produce milk, right? And that milk is created for your offspring. Like you, whatever is inside of you, whatever you are ingesting, that's going inside of your offspring and you would want that to be the healthiest thing because that's your child, right? Okay, but the crazy thing is, well, if you want it to be the healthiest thing, like why would you put a foreign animal's breast milk, like baby breast milk, when you're a grown adult? So it just doesn't make sense now that I look at it, but back then y'all, you know what I'm saying? Like. You don't think about those things before you engage with uh, non-dairy or plant-based, plant-curious. You don't really think about dairy in that way. So if you've never thought about it in that way, just think about it that way real quick, okay? Just let your spirit know that you know your body was made to ingest uh, breast milk and that don't come from a cow udder, okay? Just so y'all know a little fun fact. Um, and it, like I said, if you are suffering with your skin, you know, I know for firsthand that my beloved Ace Anderson, he had eczema. I was suffering with intense acne all right here, like just small little pimples all around. 
And once I went vegan, y'all, I don't even think about those things anymore. I don't think about my arms itching. Raise your hand if you have ever had, like during the summer, you've ever had your skin start to itch here and there. Uh, none of that happened anymore after I stopped eating dairy. So that just kind of tells my body personally that, oh snap, obviously if something is creating an irritation outside, my outside is telling me something, then something's going on inside. And what's crazy is the fact that I didn't know how good I could feel once I cut out dairy out of my diet. Um, I didn't recognize that like I could eat, oh my God, ice cream, I could eat butter. I didn't realize I could have all these things that taste exactly the same but don't make me feel like death. And you know, the whole vegan journey, it really is a journey, you know? Take your stepping stools. If you happen to eat dairy again, that's okay and that's all right. That's okay and that's all right. You're not a perfect human. You're not, nobody's perfect. We're all trying to do our best. So if you happen to engage with dairy, with milk, with animal products again, that's okay. Listen to your body. That's the most important thing out of all of it at the end of the day is it's not about, oh, I'm a bad vegan. I'm a bad plant-based person. I'm a bad human. It's not about that. It's more so about, okay, I haven't been eating dairy, milk, meat for about, you know, two weeks. I like it, but I crave cheese. So, you know what? Go have the cheese. Go do it. Do it. But listen to your body. Listen to your spirit. Listen to your soul and see how you feel. Does your stomach start rumbling? Do you start having diarrhea? Does your skin start itching? For me, that's what happened. Maybe that's the same thing that happened for you as well. But really just listen to your body. That's kind of how I have formulated the diet that I have today, which is gluten-free and vegan as well. Mostly soy-free, uh, a lot of nut-free as well, but all colorful home cooking, baby. All right, so let's check in on our Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. Let's see how they are doing. And oh, yup, they're cooking, y'all. They are cooking. I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit higher because I really want that cheese nice and melty. So, yeah, y'all. All right, so I was thinking, I was like, okay, what's a song that I know some of the words to that I could sing today? So a lot of people, a lot of people always tell me that I could be Princess Tiana. They're like, oh my gosh, you're like Princess Tiana. And that's great. I'm so glad you think that because I actually used to play her in princess parties. So if I can remember the words, we gonna sing a little almost there. <laughs> I remember daddy told me fairy tales to come true, but you gotta make it happen, it all depends on you, so I work real hard each and every day, now things for sure come my way, just doing what I do, look out boys, I'm coming through and I'm almost there, hey, I'm almost there. People gonna come in from everywhere cause I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. <laughs> so there you go, y'all. A little Princess Tiana almost there. Let's see, I thought of another song. I could say thank you so much for your kindness, y'all, for celebrating my voice and my spirit and my soul. The other song I was thinking about singing today, let's see if I remember all the words. I think I remember the chorus. One night only, one night only, that's all we have to spare. Uh, uh. One night only, let's not pretend to care I got a one night only, one night only Come on, big babe, come on hey, hey. One night only, we only have till done We only have till done Whoa y'all thank you so much for letting me sing my little disco dream girls jam situation for y'all today so i think it's time to check in on our enchiladas need to clean up a little bit check in and see if we're ready to get things going my loves 
All right, look, see these right here, these are the Trader Joe's tortillas. Y'all, I ain't gonna lie to you. I made enchilada. This is the first time I ever made this recipe. See how they kind of fall apart as you try to roll them? They just ain't got that, that, that flimsiness that I like. So I'll probably be using these in something else. These are great for the stat grilled veggie pizza dia marinara cheese tortilla. These are perfect because they are harder and they're just gonna give you that, that kind of texture you want. But I'm not gonna be using that for this. <gasps> Y'all, I almost forgot about our mango salsa. There she is right there. And after we clean up a little bit, I think we should be able to assemble everything. All right, let me move this on over because we're done with her for now. Stag real baby, pizza dia, marinara cheese tortilla. That song is always stuck in my head, y'all. No freaking la, no la. So like I said, get yourself your fresh parsley. We're gonna be adding that at the very end to the top. The other things I have here are some feta crumbles from Follow Your Heart. Y'all see, I'll be going in. I'll be making things hella decadent up in here. Um, I have some feta crumbles that I'm gonna be sprinkling on there as well. And I'm gonna be moving things because I don't know if Ace is gonna be using this table to take photos. I think he's gonna be doing it somewhere else. But y'all, nonetheless, she's still gonna be delicious. So let me go grab our enchiladas, y'all. Mm. <gasps> yes! All right, I'm actually I'm gonna grab Ace Anderson and then we'll get going. Haitian jackfruit enchilada, bacon and a mango salsa. Haitian jackfruit enchilada, bacon and a mango salsa. Hey, hey, Haitian jackfruit enchilada, bacon and that mango salsa. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas, bacon and a mango salsa. Hey, that's a new dance. Bacon and a salsa. Hey, 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 hey. Ace Anderson in the building. Y'all, what's good? What's good? Ooh, ooh. Baby, look at this mango salsa we made. Nice. Babe, wait. Before you take any photos, he needs to taste this, y'all. He needs to understand what I created today, all right? Haitian jackfruit. Baby, get a bite of this. Oh, I think you got one of the time seed stems. <laughs> y'all, this is what I'm talking about. This is why you take out your time stems. Isn't that good? Yeah. It's got a, I like, there's oregano in it. Yo, it has so many different things in it. Mm. 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 And it reminds me of home. It reminds me of my childhood. All right. So, my love, I am thinking that we should probably take the photos on this table. Do you think you could clear out that space while I get things ready to go? All right, y'all. So, uh, if y'all know this or if you're just tuning in, so all the photos you see of me or of my food, um, Mr. Ace Anderson, he takes all those because he has a gift. He has the ability to not only, he was smart and he invested in a ton of equipment and things like that, but he also loves me. <laughs> and he likes taking photos of my passions and my food and things like that. So anytime y'all see a photo, be sure to follow Ace Shot That. Ace Shot That. Like he took a photo, shot that. Um, make sure to follow him and you'll be able to find all of his other photography and all his other great things that he got going in his life. All right, baby, I think it's time. Haitian jackfruit enchilada. All right, y'all, oh my gosh, they have a nice crispy edge. Y'all, check it out. Y'all didn't know we were gonna do all this now. Look at this, Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. Bacon, that's what we just did. Haitian, do y'all ever forget the words of the own songs that you make up? Because I do. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. All right, let's finish these off with that freshness. Woo! Mm, 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 mm. Yes. All right, let me get out my mini one I made right here. Yes, jackfruit. And look at this cute little one I made, baby. Isn't that so cute? That's my little tasting friend. 
All right, so I'm gonna keep these nearby because I already know I'm gonna be mean to add on more of that. So we have our cheese. Now we're gonna sprinkle on over some of this mango salsa. If you want, you can serve this on the side, but we're doing, we're going in, y'all. We are just adding a beautiful sprinkle of salsa on top. There we go, yes. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. Bake them and add mango salsa. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas. Mm. Bake them and add mango salsa. There we go, yes, let there be light. Let there be light, he said. Mm. So I am adding this, oh my gosh, that green onion is perfect. All right, so I am adding this. Ooh, let me actually add some of my little mini one, too, so I can get a little vibe for everything. All right, there she goes. Come on, look. I love this little mini enchilada, y'all. This was like the best idea I had today. All right, so I have my salsa. Y'all check that out. And the next thing I'm going to add on some of my feta crumbles. This is just, I want more cheese, y'all. I just wanted more cheese, and I wanted more vibrancy, too, just to give it a little bit of what you need. Feta crumble. I like that bright white color right underneath my um, little bit of freshness whenever I'm making something. So that's just me, and that's just kind of my vibe and my energy. If you don't got the feta crumbles, that's okay, but look at how delicious she is. Mm, 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 mm. I think that's enough feta crumbles, baby. What you yeah. think? Mm, mm. The feta crumbles also adds a nice little bit of acidity in there. Mm, mm. <laughs> if y'all can't tell, I really like these. All right, and now finally finish it off with some parsley. Look at that beautiful. Oh snap, she's delicious. Oh snap, she's delicious. All right, I'm gonna add some of my feta crumbles onto my mini friend right here for my dig on intro. Mm, look how beautiful that is. Wow. Mm. And then finish off with some parsley. Oh. Yo, we are done cooking, my loves. Check this out. Where did I put my little gloves? All right. I already know she is hot. You should be here, ladies. You think so? Well, I want the people to see my love. Yes. <gasps> Yo, look at this. This is gorgeous. We did that mango salsa. See what I was talking about? You put that cheese on there, and then you add on more of that cheese, and then you add on that freshness right there, my loves. Perfect. So, what do you think, baby? Just leave this here for now. Mm -hmm. And then whenever we're done, y'all, we're going to take a few photos. So, y'all, look at this, look at this, look at this. Haitian <laughs> jackfruit enchiladas. All right, I'm going to dig on in, my love. This is beautiful. Like, I knew she was going to be cute, but, like, she real cute. You know what I'm saying? All right. Ooh. Yeah, she's hot. Ooh, she's hot, hot, hot. All right, let me get myself a little knife. I'm going to get a bite of everything, too. Mm. Actually, let me get a smaller piece. Because y'all know, best believe your girl's about to dig on in. Y'all know I practice intermittent fasting. So this is one of my big meals. Oh, wow, look at this. Look at this. See, it's going, it's going to work. Oh, I see that. I see that. I see that. Oh, I see y'all. Look, we got all of our things. We got our mango right there. Look at that. Mm. I don't want to burn my mouth. I'm nervous, y'all. Go in, go in, go in. Mm. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh my. Y'all. I thought the jackfruit was good just by its. So, oh my god. There's so many flavors going on. And that mango on top. Oh my gosh. Mango with the chili enchilada sauce. Y'all, so good. Y'all saw how simple, how easy it was for me to make this fabulous, colorful meal. Something from my culture that y'all can share with your family. 
and maybe make it a part of your family tradition too to make yourself some Haitian jackfruit enchiladas, my loves. Check these out. I will see you all next Saturday here live in the cooking class with me, one great vegan. We're gonna be making something colorful, fabulous, fresh, delicious as all get up and something that y'all gonna be able to tune on in and create at home as well. So I will see you all next Saturday, my loves. Goodbye. Haitian jackfruit enchiladas, bacon and add mango salsa. Haitian jackfruit 